Hey, what's up, guys? So I've been following this RTX 4090 and some of the 4080s that are burning up and melting for quite a while now. Actually, since the channel started, this has been a pretty prolific topic on my channel. Um, so I really wanted to cover the new video from Northridge Repair. Northridge put out another video um, stating that he's getting anywhere from 20 to 25 cards a week, which is a insane number when you consider that he's just one small shop. So let's check out some of his video here. Before I start the video, I just want to say that normally I don't do this kind of like reaction style content. I typically do like production videos or, you know, lots of cuts here and there and inject myself in the video to give credit to the content creator that's putting the video out and help my own channel. Um, in this circumstance, Northridge Repair, I mean, this is an awesome channel. Definitely go sub to his stuff. Um, he just does amazing work. He also has a ridiculously good voice that just cuts through everything that I say. Um, so before we go any further, just wanted to mention that if you guys like the React style stuff, you can let me know in the comments down below. Um, yeah, let's get into this video. Here we have a 4090 video card that came in for repair. It came in for a melted 12VH PWR connector, a well-known issue with 4090s. And as a matter of fact, we have a couple of cards, a couple of 4090s that we need to work on today. We have this one here that came in with the 90 degree adapter. We need to check. So if you guys didn't know, the cable mod 90 degree adapter has been pretty much the most problematic thing that's come out for the 40 series when it comes to the 4090 and the 4080. I don't know if it's the older Astron style pins that are inside the actual um, cable or connector design itself or what it is that's causing all these problems. They did come out with a revision called the 1v1, I believe. I'll put a link to it down below. Um, but if you guys are running this older version, I would say just take it out ASAP. Change the connector on. And we also have an Asus one that uses a different type of 12V HPWR connector, the reversed one. And it looks something like this. Also, one other thing about Asus. I don't know if it's the popularity of Asus video cards in general, um, but it seems like the Asus OC models are like the highest failing alongside with Gigabyte. Um, on these 4090s. So anything that has like an overclock or is coming slightly above factory seems to have more issues than a factory card like a Founders Edition or a, uh, you know, if you apply an undervolt of some sort or you're just not running the card at 100%, you know, all power all the time. We get about 20 to 25 4090s a week. We get them in Damn. so much that I bought myself this Hiroshima mask so I do not have to smell the burn on those connectors. This one right here. Anytime I'm working on a 4090, I'm using this mask. And this mask is usually used to filter out asbestos, mold, um, vapor acid, and all the dangerous chemicals. So every time I'm working on a 4090, the smell is unbearable. It smells like fireworks times 10. It cannot be healthy to keep smelling burnt connectors, that nasty smell coming out of the card or of the connector. The other thing to consider too is that these connectors are soldered in with Rojo's compliant solder, which is like a, it's, it's the older solder that we used to use all had lead in it from years and years and years ago. And we changed over to non-leaded solder. So to get some of these connectors out, I've done a few myself, um, just simple practice on like random older boards, not the new connectors, but some of the older ones. I've had to use everything from solder wick to leaded solder, uh, leaded solder, and then a heat gun at the same time while applying. You need like four arms to do this. So you have to like apply the uh, heat gun with a soldering iron at the same time, uh, put in leaded solder, and actually use that to basically heat up the existing solder and then use a solder sucker to pull the actual joint out. And then you gotta do it one by one until you have very minimal solder. And then you can pull the connector out while running the heat gun. And you do it very carefully because if you do it too close, you know, you'll melt or knock off some other parts that are on the PCB. And it's, a, it's just a challenging thing. And I also purchased a huge purifier that I have in the room here that filters out the air in the room. Health yep. is number one, because what good is it if you are fixing 100 cards a month, but you lose your health? You have to pay attention. I do use a fume extractor, of course. As you can see right here, I have two of them. 
I have this right here and I have this right here. One of them I put on the side and one of them I put on the top. So this guy is so professional. Out, but still, when working with those connectors, the whole room will smell like burn. Let's take a look. And you can see how the connector is burned. And you still have people like Gamers Nexus that still thinks it's a user error. So if you guys don't know about the Gamers Nexus video, um, pretty much he is stating that it's user error. And that was said from the very beginning. I'm sure many of you guys have already seen that video. Early, early testing when the 4090 first melted. Um, basically, Steve Burke over at Gamers Nexus came out and said, we've done all of this testing. If you slightly have the cable in crooked, it will melt. And although I do believe that that is something that... Um, makes the problem happen faster like if you're have you know if you put your pc together and you have the cable in perfectly and you start to cable manage and uh, you put the glass panel back on and you're like i'm good to go i checked everything yeah the cable might have gotten a little bit crooked especially if you're running like a cable mod or a um, aftermarket cable that had a different tolerance in the connector itself and even if it comes slightly loose it definitely like advances the problem and uh, but it's also been pretty factual at this point that people just running normal setups with a hundred percent everything seated and checked have also had this problem with the stock cable mind you and so we know it's not just the user error at this point and that's why i think um you know northridge is pretty frustrated with this whole thing I just want to show you how many 4090s we fixed this week. We have one here. We have one here. We have one here. One under it. We have this one. And we have this one. And we have the one under it. And we have the one under it, and we have this one, and this one, and this one. So now it's safe to see. I don't want to call Northridge out here, but I, I kind of wish I, that he picked a better week with more cards, just because I think that was like somewhere around 10 cards. Um, I would have picked a week when there was like 25, 30 cards, all bad, just to show off like how many are actually bad. Uh, this seems like a reasonable batch that you would get from Cable Mod. I mean, none of this is reasonable. Let's be realistic here. But um, I know that he is partners with Cable Mod still, and they do still send him their cards that are bad. Uh, I did see a few other cards in there, like Zotac. There were some Gigabyte ones. So, you know, it's showing, you know, it's not just one brand for sure. Um, back to the Asus thing. Asus just seems to pop up the most. Maybe the Asus people are the most vocal online. Who knows why it is. To say the 4090 melted connector is not a user problem. We discussed this many times in the past, but I want to mention it one last time that this is not a user error. Let's flip the board. Uh, we're going to go on the back here. Now the board is very thick. To melt solder on this board is not an easy job. I saw a well-known channel working on a 4090 connector and he made it seem like he applied hot air for two seconds, the connector came out. Yeah, that's what I was actually saying to you guys earlier. So um, I haven't gotten this far in this video yet. I basically just listened to the beginning part and the UFD coverage of it. Um, so when you're desoldering this, you're gonna actually have to sit, sit around for a while with a heat gun heating all of this up, uh, you can't have it too close, and then you get to start either taking some of the solder out or using the leaded solder to basically inject that heat into the pin itself, and it can be extremely challenging. And if you're not careful, you can rip out the little rings around these solder joints and even cut some of these traces that you see here running. And it's just it, it can be challenging if you don't know what you're doing, um, I've done soldering for most of my life. I'm not a professional at all. I've been just doing it through a family business, and that's how I learned. But um, yeah, let's see what he says. Out. He tried to desolder the holes using a tiny soldering iron tip, which is absolutely not possible. And then he cut the video and then installed the connector.
and that person usually never ever cuts or edits his videos but on that specific video he had to edit so people do not see that it took him half an hour to remove that connector I'm easily not any names of course but just to let you know that just real quick a soldering tip if any of you guys are trying to solder or get into soldering a lot of times when people will buy a soldering iron and use it for the first time they'll use a small tip like this one here so you have two tips this is the smaller one and i don't know why i just see this happen a lot with people or people will ask me questions and i am no means but by any means a professional solder i actually just did it as a family business thing for like half my life but um this one here is a more typical one i would use it's a little bit thicker uh, this one here is not even good for this job. You'll actually want a bigger tip and you'll want more heat on the board. I'm sure he'll tell you in a minute about this. And uh, you'll, so essentially like, this is the one I would suggest for any, you know, like small projects. Obviously, if you have a tiny, tiny joint, you would go with a, a smaller tip. But um, in general, you kind of want to cover the surface area of what you're trying to heat up. And yeah, let's see what he says here melting solder here is not easy it's not and an that's easy task. flux it's that's take an extreme he's, amount he's of putting heat, flux on there and that's something that we do not want to do we do not want to bombard the board with heat and damage the board to desolder a connector and that's why we have techniques i work on this very same issue every single day and i have developed a certain technique to be able to remove that connector and do it in a safe way let me show you something quick i just want to do what that other guy did, use a small tip, a smaller tip. Actually, the tip that he was using was a bent thin tip. So maybe this one is bigger. And he applied. I really want to know what the other channel is. It let it solder. Okay. I can point this tip on this joint all day long. 30 years from now, I'm going to come back and solder still would not have melted. Why? Because the board is thick. A lot of thermal mass. The size of the tip is not enough to melt solder on that joint. You can use a combination of hot air and soldering iron, but that's not a practical way of doing it. One way to desolder this connector is to preheat the board. The board gets saturated with heat, and then we can use our soldering iron, low melt solder, and some hot air to remove the connector. So I don't want to play too much of this video. You guys really should watch his video. Um, we're about for five minutes in here and i got a feeling he's going to keep talking about how to desolder this stuff i mean there's really only so much we can talk about here um i do know that somebody had mentioned that there's like an ad segment in here um yeah right here i'm assuming i tried okay this and another one that looks the same but it's different from a different company and you yeah, so this right here is a traditional solder sucker. This one is from the brand Pullet, I believe, or Solder Solder Pullet. Um, that's just the name of it. But I've been using this style pretty much forever, and uh, it it works really good. Obviously, um, it seems like he has something new in his shop, so he's probably just trying to do a little ad spot. Maybe who knows? I uh, appreciate the hustle. But yeah, so pretty much it seems like, you know, we're just going through all of the soldering techniques. Um, so I've scrubbed around this video a little bit. Um, I don't want to play any more of it just because it's his content. You guys should actually just watch his video. He goes in and talks quite a bit more about all the techniques and things that he's doing. If you find any of that stuff interesting, yeah, definitely check it out. Um, in conclusion, we're already a year past this problem nvidia has said absolutely nothing about this since it's happened uh people like gamers nexus who i totally respect have not come back out and mentioned this again they've kind of one and done it they you know they talked about it for a little bit then they closed the case on it i'm tired of bringing it up i've brought it up a bunch of times i do run a 4090 in my own personal rig it still bothers me. Uh, I'm not like a fan of the idea that, you know, if I'm just running it or I walk away, it might burn up or something. Actually, I literally it's a joke, but I keep this by my computer at all times. Will it happen? I really hope not. Um, who knows what could happen? You could actually burn down your house. There's all these different things. So I think 
somebody with some money <laughs> should uh, take out a class action lawsuit on NVIDIA and uh, maybe it would, I don't know, do something. Before I go, I do want to say thank you to you guys who commented on the post on my channel. I was in a car accident a couple weeks ago. It was nothing major. I didn't get like massively hurt or anything like that. Um, I did lose my car that I just paid off, and it's a uh, it's an older car. It was like an older Mini Cooper, um, but I liked the car, and uh, it was one of those moments. And the past couple of weeks, I've been just like I don't know, really rethinking a lot of things and just trying to figure out what I'm doing. You know what I'm doing with the channel. Uh, I got some projects coming up. This one is actually pretty much completed back here. This, if you can see it, you want to focus camera. All right. This is a PC I'm building for a friend of mine. Um, it's a really awesome budget orientated like custom loop. We always do these things where we like hunt the local marketplaces. So it's not going to be a complete build um, video like start to finish or anything like that. I noticed that that kind of content is kind of run its course on YouTube. So I just wanted to, you know, show it off a little bit uh, i'm gonna talk about it i'm gonna benchmark it and uh, we're gonna talk about how expensive it was it was actually really really reasonably priced and for the performance you're getting not to mention the custom loop and everything it's just a cool system and uh yeah so that's gonna do it for this video guys if you like the video drop a like on it um definitely drop a like on north ridges video and sub to his channel because this stuff is awesome uh, I don't like to like content farm. I just love talking about this specific topic. It's something that's just, I don't know. We've brought it up so many times on the channel. So this video is very relevant to me. Stay posted for more content and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.